Hello and welcome back to another evening of sculpting. I'm still working on converting this Kesotsu into being a paramedic profile. Went ahead and just added a little bit of uh, copper rod here so that I can do a little bit of work on this arm and then just glue it in place uh, while we're working tonight and finish up the shoulder pads. And I think uh, once that's done, he will be complete. So I'm hoping I can knock him out today. And with that said, I think it's time to mix up little green stuff. Since I'm getting a little bit of a later start tonight, I'm not going to try and mix up quite as much as I normally do. Hoping to get just enough to be able to finish this off. Maybe I work on a couple other small things on the side once he's done, but I don't want to be left with a big ball of green stuff that i got to figure out what to do with. So we just want to do a couple things, like add the little wrinkles around uh, the pin in the elbow uh, to this arm in particular, because it's going to be the one that I can't really uh, easily get to uh, to finish off. So.
that sit for a minute before I try and glue it on. And I'm just going to work on this arm real quick. Yeah, it's going to be a, a queso to paramedic. Just working on pretty simple conversion here. As far as, you know, trying to accomplish anything grand. I just had to, these are the arms from the spec ops. I had to basically shave them all down.
I had the uh, tournament go last week. Or uh, Saturday, I guess. Ten people's not bad. Yeah, sorry I couldn't make it. I would have uh, liked to. I just had some homework stuff that I had to finish up. Having two master's parties seems like, yeah, it would be a uh, pretty, pretty bit of a, bit of a celebration there. Two new players, that's pretty good. Or two, at least two new tournament folks. They wanted a little armband for his uh, his medic armband. I'm just gonna go ahead and add that now before I do the uh, full shoulder pad, just to get a kind of an idea. Probably have to come in and clean this up a little bit, but. Right now, everything's really green, so it's pretty sticky and... can be a little bit trickier when it's like that to get it to get a nice, good edge to it. Or that thing's just kind of getting pushed back and forth, but this is way too much, so I need to cut a little bit off. Oh, nice. Uh, the the younger dude, or the is he thirteen, fourteen, something like that. Won his first game. Yeah, 
knights in the armory can be pretty difficult to flesh out. Especially if any of them are, uh, what are they, the, the Teutonic knights now that have the plus to dodge. It's just like, oh, I'm going to get here with a shotgun, and then they just dodge on 17s or something ridiculous. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that was like, that was the day where I was just like, man, I really don't know what I'm doing. The only, only win that I've had recently is against a literal child. <laughs> Yeah, I think they're they're definitely showing their age too, as far as uh, the sectoral wise, because they were kind of created during end of ages in three, and I don't feel like they've really gotten addressed. Tunguska has really gotten addressed four in four. Uh, but especially since, you know, that uh, Krigdor and Bakunin have both gotten, like, you know, it seems like they've both gotten, like, multiple glow-ups recently. I'm kind of like, well, I hope they... In some ways, I kind of hope they don't do Tunguska, because that's... just too, many, too much nomads. Yeah, I think in some ways Tunguska's in an odd spot because they're they're kind of in an odd spot of of being in that pre HSN or kind of the end, tail end of HSN three, uh, and they're they're kind of their issues always been that they were like you know hacking focused. That means that all of their specialists are vulnerable to hacking, or you know, large majority. Like they don't have a cheap, uh, you know, FO or anything like that. Uh, other than the remotes, which are also, you know, vulnerable to hacking. Uh, so they don't have like a cheap infiltrating FO or anything like that, uh, or even. Uh, it just so uh, they're just kind of missing some of those tools that make like nomads hacking is pretty good already, but when you're just focused on that, it kind of makes you less uh, less versatile because hacking like for hacking to be really nice, you kind of either need to front load with a uh, guided missile bot for yourself, or your opponent has to bring heavy infantry or a tag for you to really be, get the most out of it, and if you don't do those things, it kind of hamstrings you in some ways, just because you don't have, you know, you, you just don't, you're not getting effective use out of the points that you're putting into those specialists. Yeah, Onyx Contacts Force will be interesting. I'm hoping that, uh, with the, it sounds like they're adding the extra. But, uh, you know, two combined, or some type of extra are coming back. So it'll be interesting to see what they actually fit into. I feel like Onyx Contact Force is a good spot for them. Because that's kind of at the moment, kind of the uh, yeah, the crab of the lists. All crabs, humans go in, and crabs come out. Uh, I think it'd be it'll be interesting to see what they do though. Because I mean, 
Onyx Contacts Force is kind of the menagerie army for combined. Um, it's where you get kind of a little mix, mix of everything, so it makes sense that that's where they would be. And I kind of am hoping that they don't try and go a full extra sectoral right away, because I feel like that'd just be too much. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of hoping they don't do the full extras to sectoral. Just be. Extra NA2 would be interesting. I think extra in, in uh, like, e extra in an NA2 would be, be fun. I think you could do some funny stuff with that because it's, it lends itself well to their whole uh, their whole deal of just being like, selling themselves to the highest bidder. So I'm going to let this glue for a second and work on this head. Yeah, Kari getting a Cascudo would be funny. You know, nothing says angry like a uh, giant, giant cockroach jumping on you, your head and exploding. Yeah, I'm actually also wondering if, because the way they're doing this, uh, yeah, they're, they're introducing that reinforcements rule. So we might just see extra, like a small contingent of extra that can be added to different armies w through that rule. Yeah, these sculpting tools are nice, the, the silicon tip clay shaper tools. They are definitely my go-to. Metal tools tend to leave a little bit more of a uh, harsh mark. Is these you can soften things out a little bit more. Yeah, airbrush is nice. I've, uh, I mean, I can't say that I'm great with it either. I usually just kind of block out some colors and then, uh, and then go, go in with the brush afterwards, but. Definitely can make those things easier. Oh yeah, yeah, no, terrain's perfect for it. I've been doing a lot of, you know, I did pretty much all of my terrain with an airbrush, uh, at least to get the paneling in on the big pieces of buildings and things like that. And yeah, it's, it's nice for like, I gotta actually have a anaconda tag that I need to work on. I'm kind of looking forward to trying out some more airbrush on that because the only tag I've painted so far is the uh, uh, Gorgos, and that's, you know, it's got some armor, but it's mostly that biomechanical armor that is a little bit easier to do with the brush, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're gonna do a sphinx, I think the I think the the forty k stuff is definitely a good place to practice if you want to get some practice in, uh, just to get those all that that 
trigger control is kind of the big thing and then the other is then just paint consistency is also I'd say probably about you know at least 70% of the battle with the airbrush Yeah, I just finished up painting uh, my, my O12, uh, the Kappa at least. I haven't done anything more than that. Um, I've been having fun with them. They're kind of interesting because they do have like that kind of the, the hex netting bit that's, you know, it's the, uh, the light blue on the models. And uh, I feel like that adds kind of an odd texture that you're may maybe not most used to. It tends to, it kind of makes it so that you have to do some brush work. You can't really rely on the airbrush that much. And so that kind of makes things interesting. But I think with even just like some dry brush and uh, washes, it's not too difficult. Yeah, the yeah, I think it's it does take a little bit of maybe a pass or two to get that to come out right. But I like the design of them though. They're pretty fun. At least the ones I've done so far. I think next on my plate is going to be the uh, Delta units cuz I got four of those guys. For some reason, I decided to, that I needed to buy the Deltas, even though I was getting two in the uh, Defiance. Yeah, how's your how's the new player feeling about the uh, O12 that he is painting, or has he not painted at all?
Yeah. Is he has he done any painting for like uh, role playing games or anything like that? Did that you know of? Yeah, that's I think kind of the hardest thing coming from at least for me when I was really starting from D and D or uh, you know other role playing games and painting up minis for that versus doing full army stuff is that you kind of get bored doing an army especially if it's you know because you want it to live uniform and then it's it's like all right this is the blue that goes on this part and this is the red and so it can kind of get tedious uh, in some ways. Yeah, and when you have the, the entirety of the army, it's just, it can be very daunting to even look at. One thing that's nice about having it all in one place is that you can then start bat batch painting quite a bit. Um, like I know it took a while to get my copper done, but I was you know wasn't really able to put a whole lot many a lot of hours into them per day. But you know I knocked out seven models in in one go. I guess the one thing though is that then it's like okay how many how often am I going to need those seven models? is nice though is that with the patch painting is that every now and then you'll find some units that are pretty similar and then you can kind of do all of those in one go. Two, you know, you should just, even though they're not the exact same unit, they share enough components. Like I'm really thinking when I do my, because right now I'm just for with my O12, I'm trying to focus on the uh, Defiance uh, side of things first. And because of that, I kind of want to do... Uh, I think I'm, I might, when I paint the Gamma, I might paint the Omega at the same time. Because they're both heavy infantry and... Neither of them have faces, so I think that might work. And hopefully I can get most of that done before uh, Tag Raid hits, because that's going to be a whole nother pile of minis that I'm going to need to figure out where to put. Kind of what I want to do for the Omega for its uh, its mimetism is to add just really heavy uh, red and blue lighting effects on it. Like it's you know just showing up with lights and sirens and that's just so obnoxious and annoying that it makes it harder to you know to really lock on and see.
but with the, uh, what is it, the, the links, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with those, because those do have the TO camouflage, or the, the camouflage as well, so that might be kind of fun to do kind of a decloaking effect on them. Get a Sphinx, they're a nice looking model too. That and uh, I think if I get a that and an avatar, I don't think I really would need to get any of the other combined tags. Like I got the overdrawn because it's cool looking, but I'm not a big fan of the Zeodron look. I think I can proxy an overdrawn or something like that if I need to. Something else. Dog wire. Yeah, then now I'm also like, huh, there's a Cascuda coming. Do I really need anything else? Or, you know, probably a Cascuda or something similar to it. Something, something big. It's going to be fighting a, a Squalo, it sounds like. I don't have one of the old Cascuda. It's a pretty fun looking model, but I also had a couple opportunities to buy one, but I'm kind of okay not having it. Mainly just because it's like, you know, it's another model to paint. <laughs> and uh, definitely got enough of those. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Tag Raid monsters because those those will take to an airbrush real nice. Nice organic sh shapes that kind of can all blend together. And hit them with washes and things like that. I feel like I might be able to crank those out fairly quickly, at least, you know, one or two of them.
Wait, did I make it to Black Ops Tournament? I hope I didn't. Oh, your Spec Ops tournament. No, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to make it to that. This is uh, this is for a client, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not going to make it be able to make it next month either because I got a wedding to go to. Um, but I hope it goes well. Hopefully, I'll be able to make it to the two day. I'm trying to find time, but it's uh, slowly, ca you know, cascading all around me. Oh, is that not not gonna work out right yet? Quite yet. Okay, so you're doing another one and just another try and get another big haul in uh in July. Ooh, yeah. Now July fifteenth, I think I will be out as well. Unfortunately, summer's uh, been eaten up already. Yeah, I know. I'm. I'm. I, it's. It's kind of a shame too, because I'm like, oh yeah, finally there's a bunch of tournaments, and it's just like, oh, I can't go to that one. Oh, ne maybe the next one. Oh no, I can't go to that one. But I'd really like to make it to another one. I just time has been short supply, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, to me, it's just extra, it's just like, a shame too, because it's like, oh, finally, tournament I'm not running, and, oh, it's, you know, it's not COVID, and, and it's like, oh, rats, <laughs> I can't go. But we'll see. Um, yeah, I think, I think, unfortunately, for, yeah, the next couple of tournaments in SAC. The, the worst thing is, so, I didn't go on Saturday, right? Um, and, uh, then on Sunday I went out to go as, you know, all day I was in, ho in the house, uh, working on things. Uh, Sunday I go out to, you know, go out for a little bit and, uh, my, somebody had backed into my car and my neighbor sees me and they're like, oh yeah, that somebody backed into it yesterday. And I was like, ah, oh, man, if I hadn't gone to the tournament, my car also wouldn't have gotten smashed. <laughs> so it was kind of funny. I was just like, dang it. Double whammy. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things where it's just like, well, I guess it's one of those things that just happens. Not much you can do about it after the fact, but just go and see about getting it fixed, but. Yeah, it was kind of funny, too, because I was like, oh, man, did somebody, did somebody break into my car, try and break into my car? Like, I didn't have anything in there. And then I, uh, you know, walk around my car, because I saw it, you know, through the window, I saw the glass, and I was like, ah, oh, damn it. And then I walk around to it, and it's just like, the whole door's caved in. I'm like, what the hell happens? <laughs> But yeah, dude, uh, I'll catch you later. I'll let you get to bed. But uh, thanks for hanging out for a bit. And uh, yeah, I hope the tournament in June goes well as well. Uh, if you can make it, we're also doing uh, one in June at uh, Gamescape North. So. Anyways, have a good one. to finish with this guy too. Just trying to zero in on this shoulder pad. I guess I could probably sign off at the moment, but I think I can I think I can hammer this out. In the next few minutes without Going too far outside of where at my stop time.
here last thing. I think I'm just going to extend this strap on this. Make it a little bit wider so it can cover up some of those things.
this guy done. I'll give it a rest for tonight. Uh, thank you all for joining. And I uh, hope you have a good evening. <laughs>